My name is Mark Mosio. I'm the HOS product owner as well as safety and compliance at Fleet Complete. The electronic logging device or ELD mandate as is, is commonly referred to has brought about some of the most significant regulatory initiatives on the part of the U.S. government. It's improved compliance with hours of service. The goal is to reduce accidents, fatalities, get fatigued drivers off the road and it has significantly updated the hours of service rules with respect to at roadside and the record keeping requirements for carriers at their terminals. The ELD device automatically captures driving time, allows drivers to update their duty status, allows drivers to edit their logs, allows a driver to maintain the original and edited logs, and allows a motor vehicle's engine to capture the data through the electronic control module or the ECM. Additional specifications is that the device must be tamper proof. It must also protect the driver's privacy. So when a driver is using a commercial motor vehicle for personal conveyance, that it will block out exact lat, lat, longitude and latitude locations. It electronically monitors the locations and the changes of duty status every time a change occurs by a driver. And it also prescribes the type of graph grid and the record of duty status, how it has to be displayed at roadside and transmitted to a motor carrier. So essentially a driver who is currently doing paperwork or paper logs must comply with the hours of service and the ELD rules. As is the case with most rules, there are always going to be exemptions. There's the short haul scenario that I described earlier. There's a tow away operation where essentially a vehicle is being towed by a, a power unit and the actual towed unit is part of the cargo. If someone is operating a commercial motor vehicle that has been manufactured older than the year 2000 and drivers who are not required to complete records of duty status for eight days in a 30 day consecutive period would be exempt from the ELD rule. Now I want to clarify though, in these given scenarios, these drivers must still complete a paper log. So you can appreciate some of these customers, some of these clients in this type of scenario will in fact uptake on ELD because it's, it simplifies their task and goes away from the paper process. Yeah, the timelines are, are different. There's a two-phased approach from December 16, 2015 to two years later, that being December 18th, 2017, carriers may begin to voluntarily use an electronic logging device. However, they have other options. They can continue using paper logs, they can use electronic logs, they can use an automatic onboard recorder, they can use a device with logging software, or they can use an ELD certified device from a vendor who's positioned on the FMCSA website as being certified. So from a second phase, from December 18, 2017 to two years later, that being December 16, 2019, carriers can do one of two things. They can use an automatic onboard recording device provided it was installed prior to December 18th, 2017, or they can use a certified and registered ELD. The one option that goes away in this second phase is the use of paper logs. They're simply not compliant at that point in time. So fast forward two years after that to December 16, 2019, all drivers and carriers must comply with the ELD rule and use an ELD certified device. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Authority have not published what are going to be some of the penalties, but you can reasonably expect that there'll be fines and penalties for non-compliance of both drivers and carriers. This could include up to out-of-service orders for drivers at roadside. It could potentially likely impact upon the hours of service, CSA basic scores. There could be penalties to drivers and carriers ranging from $1,000 to $11,000. And as a carrier's regulatory profile deteriorates, it's reasonable to expect that there'll be more regulatory attention. Vehicles will get stopped at roadside. They'll be brought into way stations to confirm that the device is in fact compliant. 
There's graduated discipline, anything from warning letters to audits. There could be interviews where the leaders of these motor carriers can be called in to attest to the programs they'll put in place to comply with the law. Ultimately, there could be sanctions. From a public profile, the carrier ratings can go from satisfactory to conditional to unsatisfactory. There could be civil penalties, there could be criminal penalties. On another front, you know, there could be a negative branding perception. If in the industry it's known that a certain carrier is a, is a regular violator of the law, and ultimately loss of customer attraction and retention is the ultimate loss for, for a fleet that's non-compliant. I get asked the question quite regularly, what is the difference between an automatic onboard recorder and an electronic logging device? Quite simply, at the highest level, an automatic onboard recorder, the device in fact must comply with part 395.15 of the US rules. The ELD device quite simply has to comply with the recent ELD rulemaking provisions that has like the 500 plus page document that speaks to all the functional requirements. As soon as the device complies with these functional requirements, then the device is ELD compliant.